Hi, my name's Lionel and I'm one of the pastors at Hope Church. I just thought I'd uh, share my story and hopefully that it encourages you. My struggle wasn't with anxiety or depression or fear or any other form of mental illness. I'm, I guess I'm one of the lucky ones. But my struggle was with selfishness and materialism and it nearly cost me my life and my marriage. My whole life was focused in on my needs being met. I was so self-absorbed that I really didn't appreciate my, my wife or my kids and, and how tragic is that. And so all of that changed around 25 years ago and I just want to tell you a little bit about that story. You know, like I, I was a bit of a man's man. I was in the police at the time. I was a police prosecutor and I was also tied up with the um, surf club down at Stanwell Park. And, and uh, I, I just loved my life. And I thought that there was nothing wrong with my life. I, I thought I had it all going on. People looking from the outside would say, oh, this guy's got it all together. He's got a, a nice family and a beautiful wife and, and, uh, and they, we'd almost paid off our house a, a, a long time ago because we bought before the boom. Can you believe it? We bought a house for $67,000. I know all the, you young folk are going, really? Yeah, so that, that was where I was at. Outwardly, it looked like I had it all together. Um, and I thought I had it all together. And I, I was popular among um, people um, because they were interested in what I did. And I found alcohol was a way that built confidence. And for the first time in my life, I felt confident. I had all these, this, um, this peer around me. But deep down, looking back now, I really was just searching for anything that would give me fulfillment. And it was a self-destructive lifestyle that I was living. And I remember that my, my wife invited me along to a course called Christianity Explained. And I said, there is no way I'm going to do that course. And uh, I said that there's no way um, you can go, you can do it. But, you know, this Christianity thing is going to split our marriage up. Well, over the next couple of days, I, I just began to think of all the genuine Christians that I'd met over my time and the apparent peace that they had about their life. And that was super attractive to me. Up until that time, I'd never given it any thought. And I, I felt also that you know, as a kid, when I, when someone shared uh, God with me and I and they prayed with me, I felt this incredible peace in my life. And also, they gave me a Bible and I read it a couple of times. And again, I felt peace at that time. And so there was this really strong desire to go along to this person's place and to hear this Christianity. Um, and, and so I was drawn to this place, drawn to it where I'd been totally against it. And now I know that that is God. The Bible actually speaks of Jesus drawing people um, to himself. And that's what I felt like at that particular time. And so I was closed off to Christianity, but I'd suddenly become open to it. And when I walked into the room, I just saw the peace that that I was searching for in these people. And I remember being rude and obnoxious, arguing with the hosts. And I, I was like a, a police prosecutor, so I thought I knew it all. <laughs> and uh, I was just rude and obnoxious. But there was one thing that I couldn't escape. These people had something that I wanted. And so I went into the toilet, not even knowing whether God was real or not. And I just said, God, I want the peace that these people have. And right there in the toilet of all places, God filled me with this peace, this inward contentment about my life and where I was seeking for fulfillment in all the wrong places and looking for stuff to, to meet my needs. I immediately felt this incredible contentment that everything was okay, that there was this peace and this joy. 
And I remember being that man's man that, that just was so um, concerned about what other people thought about me. And I knew that if I went to the surf club and told them in the surf club that I was going to go to church rather than the surf club, I knew that was social suicide for me. And I, all my life, I'd, I'd looked for the approval of man. And so that was a real struggle. But I just went to, to the surf club the following Sunday, told everyone, hey, you know, I'm not coming back. I'm going to, um, I'm going to church. And, and I thought that I'd be ridiculed. And a few people had a go at me. And maybe they did behind the back. But I, I didn't really care because of, I knew that God was real. And he changed my life. I, I told everyone at, ch in my, at my work that I, that, um, that I became a Christian. And they were talking about me, but again, not in a negative way, in a positive way. And so I went from living a, a self-absorbed, self-centered life to, to a life that really appreciated my family and loved my family. And I could, I could appreciate them for who they were and I and I, I got my fulfillment from God. So I wasn't looking to them to fill a need within me. And I remember skipping down the road um, in a suit and a briefcase. I know this is a bit out there, but this is how I felt. I can't explain the inward contentment any better than I just overwhelmed with happiness. And it, this is what the Bible calls the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, and peace, patience, gentleness, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and self-control. And all of that happened to me. I became patient. I became, my anger came under control. I had an incredible love for people. There was this joy, this uncircumstantial happiness just overflowing in my life. And, um, I didn't know that that's what was meant to happen to me. It just happened and it was just so incredible. And so I just want to quickly share a verse of scripture with you that really sums up what I believe happened to me. And it's in John chapter 4 verse 14. And these are the words of Jesus. And he says, those who drink the water I give will never be thirsty again. It becomes a fresh bubbling spring within them, giving them eternal life. And here Jesus is speaking about the Holy Spirit. And this Holy Spirit would be like, like um, a drink for our soul. You know how when your body, uh, when you when you're thirsty in your body and you may have had exercise and you're at that point of dehydration and you drink water and it's and it's like you're instantly feeling better and refreshed by the water that you're drinking well jesus is saying like the 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 water that i will give him the holy spirit that i will give to people um, will refresh their soul and that is all the invisible parts in our body that we don't actually see. So that is our mind and our thought life, that it is our our belief system and it is also our emotions. And it's like God brings refreshment and fulfillment in that area so we don't crave after other things. My life is so full of meaning and purpose and direction and love and the things that I used to think that would bring me happiness like like um, a, ha a nice house and and stuff like you know just a whole bunch of stuff I realized that didn't give lasting fulfillment. I was looking to that to try and make me happy, but it doesn't. And so now I'm so content um, with with God um, that I don't need these other things. And so um, this Holy Spirit is also like a bubbling spring that if we will continue to come to God and continue to seek Him for our fulfillment, then we will never thirst again. He will continue to, to feed us that water. <laughs> and so I, my life over these 25 years, 
I've always felt content. I've always had this inner, inner peace. In the midst of everything going wrong in my life, I know that God is with me and I've got this assurity in my heart. And, uh, and so I just want to encourage you also that this Holy Spirit is our deposit guaranteeing eternal life. That's what the Bible says. And so I know, and it also says that it's a foretaste of heaven. So I've had a taste of what heaven is going to be like. And I, I, I want to just tell everyone, <laughs> um, you know, about this peace and this joy and this love that I have in my life. You know, um, I gave up a, a promising career as a lawyer and also a business owner. I had 50 uh, staff working for me. So you can only begin to imagine the sort of money I was earning. And I gave all that up because I wanted to tell people about what had happened to me. I wanted people to know the truth that that they could experience God the way that I had experienced him. And so I'm, I just want to give you the opportunity to do that. If you're ready to do that, um, would you pray this prayer with me? Oh, dear Heavenly Father, I am so sorry that I have done life my own way, that I've chosen my own path and I have sinned against you. And I know that, you know, that if it wasn't for Jesus, then I would spend eternity away from you, eternity in a place called hell, a place of torment. But you are calling me into a place of paradise and you desire a relationship with me. Lord, would you come into my life? Would you make your home in my heart? I receive your forgiveness right now. Would you come into my life right now in Jesus name? Well, I just uh, hope this has blessed you. Would you reach out to me if you've made that decision? I would love to send you a Bible. I'd also um, love to put someone alongside you that could help you just grow in your faith because you'll have so many questions. You know, how do I read the Bible? You know, where do I start? What does this mean? You know, how do I live my life? How do I pray? All those sorts of questions. So I want to get you connected. God bless you and have an amazing day.